minutes left for your meal. Uh, twenty more minutes for uh, twenty two twenty five minutes. Uh, you, if you have time for questions, you can ask uh, the good kids the questions for recording. Okay. And uh, and voila, and I will show you ten minutes with the best of. And voila, uh, okay. Can you can you start please? Yeah, right now. It's okay for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, right now uh, we have a great presentation how to migrate from jQuery to React and I think a lot of people has work to do that. Thank you a lot for the presentation. Hi everyone. It's amazing to see so many people in JavaScript uh, room. Um, so today I will talk about the process, the transformation from a uh, legacy JavaScript from server-side rendering into a more modern web application, which in our case is React. So first of all, my name is Amir. I work at Reddit for more than three years. And in my team, we mostly focused on um, Foreman. Foreman is, Foreman is a open source for a management tool um, to servers, physical servers, and uh, of course, uh, virtual servers. So Foreman established in 2009. And in 2009, Ruby on Rails was very popular. So we used the Ruby on Rails. And we used server-side rendering. So today, I'll start with the first steps. What you should do. What the first step you should do in order to become, in order to start this process, in order to start this um, transformation process. After that, after that, we'll talk about the connection, how to communicate between the old world between the legacy JavaScript and the new world. After that, we will talk about client routing. Do we need client routing in our modern application in hybrid way? And after that, we will wrap up things and we'll talk about long-term goals. So let's start from the first steps. So first of all, why React? Why use React? So we have plenty of reasons for that. I think. The number one reason, of course, is performance. React renders only the change, the, the, uh, the components that has been changed. So your, your web application doesn't need to re-render each time. Of course, you can scale up things very fast. Due to the mechanism of components, you can start from small, and then you can gain some complicated components after that. React is a great community, and I don't have to, to mention that, of course, and with great packages. And it's fully testable with JS and, Enzy and Enzyme, and you can just, with one second, you can, uh, you can write a test. And of course, the debugging stuff with React, you can see, actually, you can see the code in React, and you can understand immediately what happens. But with legacy JavaScript, it's a bit harder to do. So, be my, be my guest and see this thing. So this is our legacy, one file, one JavaScript file. Um, as you can see, it's a very long file, more than 800 lines, and it's very difficult to debug. If you change something here, if you change that jQuery stuff, other functions can be, you know, um, be ch uh, changed as well. So it's really difficult, it's really frustrating to debug, to debug this file or even to change things, small things, or you want to do some refactoring, it's really frustrating to do. So that's the, the major reason we uh, did that transformation. So our approach is start from small, which means bottom-up approach. Start from basic components, um, such as buttons, inputs, and you can gather these components and you compose it from these components much more of course, um, complicated components. And with these compo uh, compo um, complicated components, of course, you can reach and have a full React page. So that's our spirit, that's our um, um, logic. Start from small, and then, of course, scale up. 
But first, let's imagine we just wrote a button component. We need to combine this compo component in our Ruby on Rails page. So we need some sort of mounting mechanism to put a new code, um, a client, client code, client uh, rendering code in our, um, in our uh, Ruby on Rails page. So we need to use some sort of mounting mechanism. So we have that function that mounts um, the component we want to put in our Ruby on Rails page. But first, we need, of course, a registry in order to register that component. So we have a component registry. So let's imagine we have that button I mentioned before. And I just need to add it to, my, to our um, object, to our registry. And then we can mount it with the mounter. So the mounter, as you can see here, is a Ruby on Rails module. And with that, we can mount um, components. We can mount Re um, React components in our Ruby on Rails page. So that's great. But instead, of course, to write your own components from scratch, you can use other libraries. So I don't know if you're familiar with React Bootstrap, but it's really um, well famous. And of course, we use and we contribute to Patternfly. So if you have, if you have enterprise applications, Patternfly can give you really nice um, design and really nice components, and it's open source, of course. So this is the first step you should do. You should have some sort of registry, and of course, a mount mounter mechanism to mount your components. How about the way to communicate between these worlds, between the old world and the new world? How we can communicate between these? So we use for that task, we use Redux. And why Redux? Because Redux is very easy to understand what's happening. And of course, with Re uh, Redux, you can access to the store. The store is your client data. It's like your massive data store for, of your client. And of, you can invoke actions. And when you in, uh, call some actions, you can change the store. And if the store has been changed, um, it forces the component to be re-rendered. So with this, we can control our components. And of course, we can subscribe the store for changes and we can call a specific callback. So we use a, a special object, a global object, in order to be the glue between these layers. So as you can see here, each entry here can be just an ES6 function, or can be action that we can invoke later. Or as you can see here, we have, I, um, we have um, subscribe, so we can subscribe um, to the store. If so, if the store has been changed, we can, do a, we can run some callbacks, or we can gain some data from the store. So, for example, this is um, a page in our application. So this one, the layout, as you can see, the menu here and the uh, top bar here is fully based on React. And as well as the breadcrumb, as you can see here, is still is, it's a React component. But beneath it, this area is not React code. This area is a server-side rendering. Ruby, Ruby on Rails. So in order, in order to communicate between these breadcrumbs and this name, as you can see, it's the same, and we need a way to communicate between these. So we use that ecosystem. We, we use that mechanism. So as you can see here, this is, um, this is um, a file which we um, import the store. We import a specific action that change the breadcrumb title, and then we can just invoke that, um, uh, we can create a function that invoke that, dispatch that action. And with this, we can actually change the breadcrumb, the, the React component. So as you can see here, here we can, as you can see here, we use that function, update title, in, in, in uh, legacy JavaScript. So it's jQuery, and we can, just apply React things in jQuery code, in legacy code. So another thing, as you can see here, we can subscribe to the store. And if the store has been changed, we can run this callback. And this callback allows us to reach the store, check the last action, and check it checks if there's some errors. And if any, we can just alter and change 
our legacy code, our um, several side rendering uh, code. So as you can see here and here, I use jQuery and I alter, I change my legacy code. I cannot change React code with this. I can, change, I can change only legacy code because with React, I have access to the actual DOM and I don't have access to the virtual DOM and we'll talk about that later. What about the opposite way? What about how we can um, use jQuery inside of our React component? Do we need it at all? So sometimes you do need it. In our case, we use select2. Select2 is an extendable jQuery, um, a nice one, really nice one. It gives you a lot of features in your selects. And we decided in order to keep our application unified, we decided to use select to jQuery extensions in our selects, even in selects in React. So let's see first how, how does it work. So as I mentioned before, we have the virtual DOM and we have the actual DOM. So React uses the virtual DOM. And we need some reference in order to reference the actual DOM. We need, some, uh, we need a pointer to point to the actual DOM. So lucky us, we have React Ref. So React Ref is it's a, a very really nice thing that React gives us. And as you can see here, this thing, the this.select, is a reference to the actual DOM. So I can, uh, I can apply jQuery function from React component. So this is select, as you can see here. It's a wrapper for uh, our select in our application. Um, so this, this dot select is the reference and how we can initialize that reference. So here, as you can see here, I have the ref inside the select input. And then I put the, that select, which is the actual DOM, I put it in this, um, in this object. So now I have a reference to my actual DOM and I can uh, apply jQuery function inside of it. So that's the opposite way, and sometimes you need it. So that's about how you can connect, how you can communicate between the old and between the new, between the, these worlds. And it's, it's very important because when you started to do that process, you don't rewrite your entire application in one day. So it's really important to have some sort of communication. What about client routing? Do we need a client routing in our hybrid approach? So in Ruby on Rails, we use turbolinks. And turbolinks, in fact, mimics the feel and, the feel and looks of uh, SPA, single page application. So how does it work? In few words, turbolinks just swap um, the body element between a new page and an old page instead of, of course, full page load. And it's, it's, make your, it's make your loading faster a bit. So you have this, the feeling that you have a single page application. But what about combining um, turbolinks and React? Does it work together? So we try that, and yes, it worked together. But what if you have plenty of React components, and in your page, it's basically based on React components, so you don't have any server-side rendering. So in that case, do we have some benefits from turbolinks? And the answer for that is not really. So we decided, we looked into something else that will give us some benefits. So that tool is React Router. But wait a minute. We have server-side rendering. We use Rails, Ruby on Rails. And what, so how, that it, how, how this can work in our application? So we do some research. We do a POC. And we manage to combine these two. We manage to combine between client routing and server-side routing. So how we do that? So we use React Controller, a specific controller that you can inherit after that. And that React Controller is rendering a specific React layout, which is still in the server-side area, which is very small. It's very lean layout. It's not the, um, the layout you know with, you're familiar with the uh, Ruby on Rails. It's really, really lean, really small layout. And after that, in the client, we have a um, root component, which wrap your uh, component. And of course, we have a switcher to switch, to distinguish between 
pages to render the right page. And of course, if it's not um, um, a React page, we should, serve, we should uh, take uh, the, the real page. We should render the page from the server. So we should use some sort of a mechanism for um, server-side rendering and client-side client rendering together. So this is our um, 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 route. As you can see, the router is wrapped our layout, as you, as you see before. And this is our switcher. And with this switcher, we can switch between our pages. So how the switcher looks? So the switcher looks something like that. So I have the switch here, and I iterate over the, my entire routes, as you can see here. And my routes, um, oh, oh, by the way, these routes are only the client routes, not Ruby on Rails, not the server-side routes. So if I have a page which I would like to render in a client rendering, I, I have this uh, in this route object. And then, as you can see, I render it with a client-side rendering. But what happens if that page is not React? What happens if my local, my location, my uh, current location is not a React um, based? So I have a default route, as you can see here. And with the default route, I just use two links, as you can see here. And then a server side rendering appears. So we have a client side, we have a client side rendering and we have a server side rendering together, mixed. So we benefit with these worlds. So I would like to show you a demonstration for, of that. And first of all, please have a look on a page with two links, none with no to a React router. So see, as you can see the, um, the spinner here, and you can see that this page is, a little bit, it's not a single page application. It's not single page application behavior. So let's have a look. Oops, it's uh, skipped a bit. With React Router. The same page, it's almost instant. So, as you see, it's really amazing to use React Router, even if you have most of your page are based on your server side rendering. So you can scale up it, you, you can scale up things and start from small, start from one React page, and after that you can have, you know, when you have that um, um, feeling in your application, I bet in, so it's only a matter of time that you use this kind of pages, you use this technology. So for long-term goals, is hybrid enough? So it's not a question of, is, it's, not a, it's not that, the, the question is something else. The question is, are you wish, do, you, do you wish to rewrite your entire application? It's a really tough task. It's a really time, time effort. It's a really time consuming task. So do you really wish to rewrite your entire application? So I bet you don't want to do that at first. So in our approach, we thought that it's really better to use single page application infrastructure, which means to, at first, to um, make your effort in infrastructure and not in just rewriting your entire application. Because with that, you enjoy the technology now and not just rewriting your application. You have the benefits of React now with hybrid approach. So when you have in, uh, that in, uh, infrastructure, which means you have better API, 
such as GraphQL, which of course um, use the client better. You have client routing, as you seen before, and you have plenty and plenty of components. And when you gather these three, it's only a matter of time until you become until you become a single page application. So yeah, it's not a matter of do you wish to rewrite your entire application. You will enjoy from this rewriting task. You will you have fun with that part. But you still have you still um, have that feeling today. You, you still use that the new technology today and not in the next future. So thank you very much. The form on what? The form on what? Yeah, that, that, that. What's that for? That went a bit fast for me. Like, what did you do here? Oh, just generally. In this specific page? No, just like with the format thing. You tested oh. how fast it was with and without turbo links? Yeah, and we just put in turbo. We, we just put React Router. And it's based on React, and it's client-side rendering. We don't use um, server-side uh, rendering. We don't do um, round trip to the server in order to get HTML. Yeah. So it's much faster just get JSON and okay. data, and you don't get any HTML from the server. Okay. So it's much faster. So yeah, it's yeah. basically it's single page application, single page application. Yeah. Uh, so. With single page apps, usually what happens is uh, they grow so much that the initial load is like impossibly long, and then the data uh, that gets pulled from the server also like people usually hey I need um, all the people in in my app and not just five of them, and what happens is they load all of them, they have it on the front end, and then they do stuff with that. But the rendering like just parsing the requests from the server in that case. Uh, starts getting too long, and uh, the I have seen where a single page app has so much data to go through on the front end that that becomes a bottleneck, and I've seen pay, uh, stuff crash when you have too many objects. So yeah. how do you do that? So it's for sure that um, single page application is like an application in your application because you have the server side, you have the backend, and then you have the client. So it's something else. You have it's not just like y we used to be to have a full stack engineers that do both, we have um, some sort of uh, application in our, you know, in our application. So yeah, it's, it's a, a, a bit complicated, but you gain a lot from it. So um, if, you see, if you look at the, you know, in, 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 in the next future, not, not what happened now, it probably, um, for us, you know, not, uh, for, um, for our project, we took the hybrid approach because of that concern. Because it's really we, we don't like to be um, to dis, um, distinguish between our in our application into this um, backend and client, and we want to have something more hybrid, something that combined between this server side rendering and client and client side rendering. Yeah, we have the last question here. So could you share more about the price? How many working hours cost this relighting from a jQuery to React? So again. Could you share more about how many working hours cause this relightening from jQuery to React? Okay. Price. So from jQuery to React, oh, so, so it's really um, a good question. From jQuery to React is something that you don't do instantly. It's something that you, 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 you know, you join that um, um, technology because you want to gain something more. Um, with jQuery, you cannot do you can you can do the same things like, like you do with React, but it takes you much more time. So you have much more benefits with this ecosystem, with this uh, with this uh, of course a hybrid approach because you still enjoy from new technology, from React, from uh, packages, from you know from um, uh, new stuff, complicated stuff, but you still. Enjoy